Welcome to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith Maley along with Morgan. Hello everybody. And we are glad to be with you this Saturday and we're doing a follow-up from last week's show. Last week's show was the biggest mistakes in remodeling, bathroom remodeling that is. And we're going to follow it up this week with the design flaws that are common in bathroom remodeling. We can't talk about it all in one show, but we do want to hit some of these, and there are several design flaws we've seen over the years in our many visits to other people's homes, and we want to help you avoid those, so we're talking about that today. And we're also going to hit our first segment. We, we, um, Morgan handles that for us, our lame contractor of the week, so help us out, Morgan. Okay, I found this one from next door in Northwest Crossing. And D. Holscher says, whatever you do, do not use Bill Bloom, who owns Synergy Contractors. Big time con man. And so like we always say, do your due diligence. We're not saying we know everything about this situation, but you want to do your due diligence. It does, it does a reminder, though, that word con man, um, you know, like a, what is that? What does that really mean? That doesn't mean he was a convict. <laughs> no. <laughs> Like a con artist, right, is what they yeah. mean. And that con artist, that term con artist, really stands for confidence artist. So they're confidence men. They're, they're people who appear to be something because of the amount of confidence they can build up in themselves. And really and truly, that is their trade. Yes. How do you build up confidence in someone? Well, I, I hope that when you call K and Builders out that you feel very confident about us too and that we build your confidence in us. But one of the things I always point out when I go is that we're going to give you proof. Yeah. Not just a bunch of words, not just uh, sweet talking, not just a bunch of fluffiness, and and not a bunch of pushiness either. We are just going to give you proof. We're going to tell you the things that you need to hear regardless of whether you like it or not. It's going to be the truth. And that way you can always stand by it and you can always say, you know what, they told me the truth. I should have listened. And we're okay with that if you don't use this, but we want to make sure that you did get some good information. It's why we're doing the show now. And we're talking about those design flaws that are so common in bathroom remodeling. And this is kind of making a subtle point that a lot of people think they can design, but they really don't know what they're doing. And uh, this is these are just some real obvious ones, and maybe it's going to help you when you decide where to go with your bathroom. But uh, it also, some of them are a little more subtle that you might not have thought of. So I'll start off with the number one design flaw that I've seen in bathroom remodeling over the years, and that is putting in too small of a shower. And the main reason that I see that people do a small shower, you know why? Why? It's not because they like small showers. <laughs> it's because they want a tub and a shower. Oh. And you know the main reason that people say they want a tub? It's for their kids? For the resale. Oh. And you know what everybody I see says they want to do? They don't take want a tub. a tub. They want to take out a tub. Yep. So it's something flawed in the in the uh, communication there that they're getting that somehow they need this tub when nobody I see ever wants a tub. Yeah. Most you know how many people peop how many people I've seen in the last five years over twenty five hundred people, and you know how many of those just love their tub. Well, how many? I could, I mean, if if anybody ever told me they love their tub, it's really really rare. And I know of two. That told me that? Well, the tailors. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but that was a very large bathroom. But out of these out of these ones where they want to remodel, they usually want a larger shower. Yeah. But they don't they're afraid to lose that tub. And so they do a compromise. They so have a you're saying if people have to choose between a tub and a shower, they're gonna choose a shower. That's right. Yeah, so, I'd agree so that's with why that. I said the, the, the major design flaw is not having a tub. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it's having a small shower that's the problem. Yep. And it's not good resale to have a small shower. Plus, it's not comfortable. It's not fun. It doesn't look beautiful. It doesn't um, make make it very handy to, to get around in there. And it's certainly not going to be very useful if you were ever injured or handicapped. Yeah. It in, feels like you're in a cruise ship, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they really, really are not very practical for, for growing and mm -hmm. aging in place, which is what, what we do a lot of, helping people to have their homes age with them and be more useful so there's one big reason you you want you do not want a sh small shower so let's just list some of those again one of them is it's not conducive to helping people who have some type of injury 
or disability in a shower that's small. It may work great for you to keep your tub, but it's not going to be useful for that. And another great reason is that it is very, uh, very low on the resale. If you ever sell your home, people are going to want a larger shower. So what happens is people say, I can come and remodel your shower. I can design your new bathroom for you. And they keep that tub in place. And you know why that others, other contractors want you to keep that tub in place and that shower in the way almost the same size, if not the same size? Because it's just easier for them. It's easier for them. That's exactly right. And the price is lower. Mm-hmm. So they and, can get your business. And they don't want to be moving plumbing. Nope. So if you keep everything in the same place, all the plumbing stays there. And so, yes, it is less expensive. But it is also like putting going halfway with a remodeling project. Not going the other half is not going to get you good resale. If you only go half or two-thirds of the way in, in redoing your shower, then, then you are really, or your bathroom, then you're really not going to get the resale out of it. I have a, I visited a client right after they had their shower redone mm -hmm. and they said that it, she had fallen and broken her shoulder right after. So they didn't even plan on this being a benefit, but they were so glad that they built that shower big enough for two people because she could not do Get in there. She yeah, couldn't she, operate it. She needed help to bathe because she broke her shoulder. She couldn't yeah. do anything. Yeah, so that could happen to any of us. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could be a motorcycle accident. Somebody's completely healthy and they need help now. Well, how nice it is to think about it. But eventually we all get older and we might sell some our home. We want to sell our home. Someone older can buy it mm -hmm. that, that needs that, that extra room. So it is a real design flaw to build a small shower. If you have to, the rule of thumb is if you have to choose between a tub and small shower combo versus a big shower, get rid of the tub and do the larger shower. It really makes a lot of sense in resale. You'll love the looks of it. You can pull to put a bench in it. You can put a little basin in there, even if it's big enough. If you wanted to wash the grandkids and they want to splash, guess what? It isn't going to get on the floor if it's in that shower. Yep. It's going to be a lot more fun for you, too. And you can put the pooch in there, bathe them, and so forth. So it's really a design flaw. Don't make that mistake when you do your remodeling. And uh, don't make a mistake about waiting too long to get BioGreen out to your house also. Like I did, uh, I waited too long. But not this year I didn't. This year I'm right on time. We're going to get it all beautiful this year because of my friend Joe Caccino at BioGreenSA.com. He's doing the bugs next week, uh, killing all the bugs that could possibly ever come up. You know what June means. June bugs. Ew. But they start before that. Before you see them, they're already in the ground trying to make havoc on your yard. So don't wait. And what a great job of taking care of sprinkler systems. I thought I had one broken pipe, one one, one that was leaking. He found seven and a bunch of heads that weren't doing their job. Well, no wonder my yard was suffering. Thanks to Joe and BioGreenSA.com. Or call them at 421-9522. And we will be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith Maley along with Morgan Roberts. Hello, everybody. And we are talking about common flaws and uh, design flaws, that is, in bathroom remodeling. Last week we did, a, we did the show on mistakes in the actual construction of bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And I'll just hit those real quick. They were, one was not proper waterproofing of the shower materials behind the tile. Mm -hmm. That's a big one and it costs a lot of damage and we see it all the time. It's the biggest warranty call in the business. We talked about wrong grout selection so that your grout changes color. Well everybody thinks that's normal but it doesn't have to be and it holds mold and builds mold and you can't kill it. It stays in there. And so that's a big one. Another one we talked about was the improper installation of tile floors on second floors where there's a wood subfloor and how so often these tiles come loose because they're not done right. And if you'd like to see how to avoid these, then you can listen to that show on a podcast of iTunes. iHeartRadio. I'm sorry, iHeartRadio. iTunes, <laughs> it comes later on, right? Yeah. And, um, and so we're doing this one on design flaws in bathroom remodeling. And we, the first one we hit at the beginning of the show was a small shower. You should, you should not do a small shower. 
Uh, if you have a choice between a bathtub and a small shower or a large shower, go with the large shower. It's way better on resale. But we wanted to go ahead and turn this section over to Morgan. She always does our client testimonial of the week. Yes, so this one is on Yelp from Donald W. And it says, We have been dreaming of a new kitchen for years. Even had other remodelers tell us the job was too small for them. Heard your ads on the local radio station and met Kay and Builders at the home show, so we decided to give you a chance, and boy, we are glad we did. You listened to what we wanted and suggested alternatives that we had not considered. You gave us an honest and fair appraisal and came in on budget and on time. Your workers were excellent and very proud of the work they did. They cleaned up the job site every day, taking extreme care in everything they did. Now we have the kitchen we dreamed of and couldn't be any happier. Thanks for everything, Keith. We will forever spread the word that K&M Builders is the best in the business. <laughs> well, that's that's a really heck of a good testimony. I we know. really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, uh, Donald. We appreciate that, and we're glad you're happy. <laughs> and uh, what we what did we learn in the business uh, classes we went to? You can't be the best, but I always kind of fight that. We want to be the I best. Know. You we were can fighting be, it in the class. <laughs> yeah, I was, and and be special. <laughs> and we, we want to be special, too. We are special, especially because of our team and all that we've invested in trying to make people happy. But I kind of think um, it's, it's not wrong to try to be the best, but but it's uh, we are really, really special. I mean, you can't be best in everything, like you said. Like, you can't be the lowest price. You can't be the best in that if you're going to be the very best in high quality <laughs> or the fastest or whatever. So, yeah, that's true. You can't be the best, but usually... We can be the best and the thing that matters the most. And so we're proud of that. But uh, we did want to mention this second design flaw. The, the, yeah. the one design flaw I see so often, and the bathrooms look nice. They can even look nice. after If you get rid of the, the flaws in, in the, the shower design, then you go to the cabinet design is one of the next ones I see. Uh, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit on a few areas in cabinet design that are always a problem. First one is their crowded sinks. The sinks are right next to the wall. And you might think, well, isn't that a plumbing issue? No, it's a cabinet issue. Because when you remodel, you can change all that. <laughs> you can move those sinks away from the wall so your shoulder, for me, and a lot of these shower, these um, bathrooms I go into, master suites and, and guest baths, they actually have um, just a minimum amount of space between the sink and the wall. So, because those are common size builder cabinets and they push that way over and my shoulders actually hit the <laughs> medicine cabinet if I'm if I bend over and I show them how, how it works for me and it doesn't work for me. And you don't want it to be like that for your next buyer and you don't want it to be like that for you. You may be tiny, but then the next person and it doesn't look good. And either. a lot of times in between the two sinks there's enough space that Absolutely. they could have all you need is a couple together. of inches to make it feel more luxurious. Mm -hmm. And and that's the thing is we're not going to use just builder grade sizes. We're going to have our cabinets are going to be custom ordered so we can make that whatever we want it. And and the plumbing can be shifted over in the wall for a small price that can be shifted. And so pulling those sinks away from the walls is a big one. Another big cabinet mistake though is that there's not enough storage in them. And you think about it. What do you see when you look at your cabinets? Right below the sink, there's a panel. And it's about four to six inches tall, mm -hmm. maybe seven. And it does. It looks like a drawer. But it's nothing. It's not a drawer, is it? No. It's a Stupid. dead piece of, it's a dumb panel there that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do anybody any good except dress it up. So why are we harping on that? You can't do anything with it, can you? Yes, you I've can. I've seen stuff. Yeah. What, do you remember what we do? Well, I don't, I don't know. I've seen the little flip out where you can put yeah. like two okay. or that, a half drawer, right? No. What's even better is, oh. is you, you put the drawer at the bottom. And, <laughs> and, and now when you open How up, smart. when you open up the doors. That's right. That's in our bathroom. Yeah. When you open up the doors, what do you see? Real short stuff in there. And there's a big, there's a big tall cavity mm -hmm. below that little panel. And you open two doors that are large, and you've got short stuff in there, about, about you know, 6 to 12 inches tall. And you have to bend down far to get it. So why not raise the bottom of that cabinet, yeah. that, that section, that large section with the doors, raise it up about eight, 8 or 10 inches, and get that stuff closer to where you can reach. Because it'll still fit. It's still going to have 24 inches oh, of, yeah. of room in there. You can put, still put large stuff in there. 
But guess what you got? By doing that, you created a space for a drawer. Now that panel that is empty, that is unusable, that is not a real drawer, just looks like <laughs> one, can now be down there at the bottom where you can actually store stuff in it. You just raised everything up, made it easier to reach, and then the bottom, you've got stuff that you want to store in there. You could put a hair dryer. You can even put a plug inside it so the hair dryer stays stays plugged in, and you pull it on one of those spongy cords. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, those, um, what are they, flexible cords. And it just goes right, and you throw it right back in the drawer. It has soft closed features. You don't even have to, you don't even have to bend down. You can actually pull it out with your toe, your foot, or you can push it back with your foot, and it'll close softly. So using that space wisely is a, is a big, big plus. Cabinet designs, uh, storage, getting the right storage, putting a tower cabinet that doesn't stick out too much, maybe a Johnny Wall cabinet over the toilet. There are so many ways that we can improve your storage and uh, really do a good job. If you have a professional cabinet designer that knows this stuff, like Bonnie and our team, so call KM Builders if you want that experience. And we're at kmbuilders.com. I want to mention another great experience that I have had multiple times at North Park Lexus at Dominion. My friend Al Cavazos is really, really incredible the way he runs that operation there. Check him out at North Park Lexus at Dominion. Dot com, And you can also call them at 816-6000. They have some hail damage vehicles right now that you should go see. They will fix them, but you'll still get a greater greater price, probably even better than I got. So <laughs> if you do, kudos to them and to you, but check them out. And we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling Design Show. I'm Keith Maley along with Morgan Roberts. Hello, everybody. And we are talking about design flaws in bathroom remodeling. And before we get into that, we want to go ahead and let Morgan do her, her segment that is What's Trending with Morgan. What did you find out? What do you like? Well, I'm not, I never really liked brown, but I've been seeing it everywhere. Brown is black. And I'm not it's talking black? Brown is back. <laughs> brown is not black, Morgan, but brown is back. Yes, and I'm not talking about like the golden hued browns or like the camel colored browns because we've been seeing that I already. I like those. Yeah, but that's, that's that's not the one. That's not a surprise. I'm talking about like the dark, dark, deep, rich browns. And they use it from terracotta to mahogany to walnut and the chocolate. And the reason that it's really black and people are liking it is because it makes any home just look timeless. Yeah. Ta think about the, your kitchen cabinets. If you have those colors, it's not a dated kitchen. It is timeless. I agree. Mm -hmm. and, and I like the espresso colors, too, because mm -hmm. they still look modern. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the great thing about, about remodeling is that you can pick these things that are important to you. And I can guarantee you, I can show other people, who, show you other folks who are doing the same thing. Yeah, you don't and, have to worry. Uh, but, you know, I don't, there's some exceptions, but we don't find many of our clients asking for those exceptions. So, so we would warn them if they did, but it's not, not a problem. Nope. You're probably going to love what y'all, what we come up with as a design team, working with your ideas and inspiration. And there's so many good sources for that. Thanks for bringing that up. Brown is back. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't be afraid of brown at all. It does really work and resell very well. We're in over 500 homes a year. I am, at least. And it's fun to see what's what's going on and what people love. And then, and then Morgan puts on uh, actual professional photographs and videos on yeah. the website every week so you need to go to look what's that section they go to to see the latest it's called uh, latest projects and so they go to what our, our home page and then hit the, the button modeling i hit, think yeah you hit you just hit that the the, the menu up there and you'll see mm -hmm. it open up on projects you'll see uh latest latest mm -hmm. projects so you can keep up with it every week and we encourage you to to keep up with it through the km builders newsletter which shows up when you go to our website by the way or you can just go at a km friends at kmbuilders.com send us an email send us an email at friends 
at kmbuilders.com uh -huh. and we will get you signed up for that and then <laughs> you'll get all of our latest stuff any latest videos that we've produced any latest projects and there's everything. a lot of fun ones in there you mm -hmm. will be amazed i'm telling you and uh, our podcast too that we do mm -hmm iTunes and right now we're working on our second season of that uh-huh so we'll be coming out soon with that and we are talking about design flaws and bathroom remodeling right now the first one we mentioned is a small shower don't do a small shower if you yeah. don't have room for a tub and a large shower get rid of the tub mm -hmm. that is my strong advice to you now we did we just finished talking about cabinet designs and the many weaknesses and problems there are with poor cabinet designs. Don't make that mistake. Come and see Bonnie at our showroom and see our cabinets and, and uh, learn about what good cabinet design really means. Mm -hmm. And now the third point I want to bring out is using natural stone. Um, is that a flaw? Well, it depends on where you use it. Natural stone in showers is not a good idea. Don't recommend it. So marble, slate, or any type of natural stone, limestone products, I don't recommend them in showers at all. And one of the reasons is because they have to be sealed to keep from absorbing moisture. They also tend to absorb the calcium deposits a lot stronger. A lot worse situation with natural stone versus smoother, non-porous products like, like uh, that looks just the same. Porcelain products look just the same but they do not absorb moisture so you can buy some beautiful products that look exactly like marble cantera marble whatever you whatever you want um, you know if you want that slate look that raw look you can get all of that in a in a uh, porcelain that is non-porous and now okay. why would you why would you want the other the real if you could get something that is so much less maintenance and you can't tell the difference yeah, I was going to say, I'm guessing that that's what we're putting in the seal shower, right? Because it looks just like marble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do it, and, and you can use it's marble. beautiful. Marble, but the lighter tones are going to hold up better. Yeah. But we recommend that you don't. Now, one of the things is you back seal these stones if you're going to put them in, in a shower. And the reason you back seal them, is, uh, which means you're putting a sealer on the back side of the tile, is because of efflorescence. Efflorescence is whenever stone products absorb moisture and like we mm. said they're porous and especially if they're not sealed regularly then they will they will actually absorb moisture which is not the big problem the problem is when they dry out so you know what happens when they dry out morgan do they crack no mm. they actually start the they pull them obviously they're drying out from the front right so this moisture that's inside has gotten into the tile and it's gotten into the grout it can get into the materials that holds it behind it and it absorbs it after repeated weddings it's going to get in there and then it tries to dry out and it pulls the lime and the, that's in the grouts in the cementuous grouts it pulls the lime out through that's the one thing that can migrate through the pores in the tile this lime will eventually load up into the tiles and get closer and closer to the surface to eventually where you get a white haze Ooh. on the shower tiles and it takes years to do that. But eventually you can get a white haze on a darker tile is really a problem. So, so that's called efflorescence. Mm -hmm. And so using natural stone can be a problem in a, in a bathroom remodeling. And you can't use those, by the way, you can't use the uh, non-porous grouts, the latex grouts on stone. So that's another reason to avoid it. So that can be a design flaw. And we want to mention... Uh, before we go on our break, our friends at Legacy Heating and AC Services, and they are doing work on many of our projects right now. We always have a lot of work going on, and they're at 830-608-8000, or go to LegacyServicesAC.com to get the very best customer service and a lot of education in what you might need to do to your system. And uh, we talk to my friends Chad, uh, Chad Briggs and, my, and his team at Legacy Heating and AC Services. And we'll be right back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. Okay. Welcome back to the KM Builders Remodeling and Design Show. I'm Keith Mady along with Morgan Roberts and she's my daughter. 
<laughs> and we are. Yeah. She gives me a hard time sometimes, too, because of that. <laughs> I still don't know why. But uh, we are glad to be back with you. We're talking about design flaws and bathroom remodeling. We want to keep you from making a mistake, and there are just so many mistakes made in the industry. It's one of the reasons we started this show almost 16 years ago. And uh, we've helped a lot of people, but we can help you even more if you look us up at kmbuilders.com and find out a lot of good information about remodeling, or just sign up for an appointment there, and I'll come out and meet you and make sure you don't have any problems. And uh, give you a probably talk to you for over an hour about things you should be aware of after listening carefully to what you are looking for. And uh, so that's one thing we can do for you. And so we're talking about the design flaws, and the one we mentioned first was having too small of a shower and trying to keep that tub. Get a bigger shower, get rid of the tub if you don't have room for both. That's going to get you the best resale and the best looks. And it's a lot more practical if ever anyone was ever injured. The other one we talked about was cabinet designs, and there's so many problems with cabinets not being useful to the full extent, uh, both in their height, where the drawer, the lack of drawers, having a fa false panel on the front right below the sink, that can all be eliminated and be much more useful. You can add a drawer to the bottom, raise those items up. Um, tower cabinets, medicine cabinets, Johnny wall cabinets that go above the toilet. These are all areas we can gain storage and give you a much more beautiful look. Putting the, the sinks too close to the sides of the wall is another big design flaw in related to cabinetry. <laughs> so a good cabinet designer like Bonnie in our offices will, will solve those issues for you and bring the world of cabinetry to life for you and just completely educate you on that. And so I want to talk about the, well, I did mention one more, and that was using natural stone in showers can be a real problem with efflorescence and with maintenance as well. So you do not want to use natural stone if you can avoid it. Now, some small stones can be sealed, and, and uh, there's, there are exceptions, and, and, but, but you definitely want to make sure you're having an expert do this, and they should not be done the same way that other tiles are being installed. And um, if you can go with a porcelain product, you're probably going to be a lot better off because you can use non-porous grouts. So let's talk about the other one that bothers me a lot, and that <laughs> is that is not relocating a drain in the shower. So people will have you remodel a, a tub into a shower. And you use this, maybe the same size space that you had before, and that's not a bad size shower, a five foot wide shower. And so in some cases, that's what they want to do. They want to, that's all they have. They just have a tub. They want to change it to a shower and they don't want to spend the kind of money that would really get involved into a major remodeling. So they stay with that size shower. And that's not a bad size shower, a five foot wide shower, and then make it a little deeper. Your tubs are typically 30 inches. You want them to be 36 to 42 deep, and that makes your shower feel a lot bigger. bigger. Plus, plus there's a lot more walking room, even if you kept it the same size, because the tub is thick. It has an inside wall and an outside wall, and it uses up a lot of space, and they're curved, so you don't get much walking space in there. Certainly no room for a bench. But when you build a shower, you get all this room, so it's not a bad size shower. The problem is, is so often, Clients are misled by contractors to thinking they can leave that drain in the same place. What's the and, big deal if they leave it? Well, where is it usually? Mm, it's on one it's side. Yeah, it's on one side. And so what happens is the tub is designed for that, and all the plumbing is right there. But when you build a shower with the drain on the edge, remember all the tile has to slope toward it. So your floor is going to have a slope from one end to the other notice it and yeah you're gonna notice it because <laughs> because what means that the right let's say that the drains on the left mm -hmm. and you walk in and you look at your shower and you're gonna see that the floor is higher on the right than it is on the left now you may think well will you really see it yeah you wouldn't see it if it weren't for the fact that your tile patterns on the walls are gonna have angles on them oh that's true the ones that are coming down in a square pattern or rectangle pattern are typically, so really they're going to have angles on all the bottoms yeah. and it's going to look crooked to your eye immediately. And you don't see that till it's all done. That's yep. what's bad about it. You don't see it till it's all done and it's too late. And 
it makes you stand up a little differently in the shower. You're actually tilted toward the wall because you're standing on an angle. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that angle is pretty steep. Um, you know, it gets higher with, with a poor contractor. A lot of times that's way too much slope. But if you don't give it enough slope because of some poor tile contractor's uh, lack of quality, the water will actually be sitting between, yeah. between the tiles because it's not yeah. sloped enough. So they have to put a sufficient slope to get that draining. So how do we avoid that? Put it in the middle. We relocate that drain to the middle. And then all four sides can drain toward it. Now, if you do a linear drain, you can do it in different places, but you can still put that linear drain right in the middle. And then you have a lot. Then what happens when you relocate a drain to the middle is all four sides of the shower are draining equally into that. So that means that all of your tiles around the edge will all look square on the bottom because you start off on a level plane and it's all going to the same point. Mm. And you're starting at the same point also, which is the last tile row that you created. That's the start of your slope for your floor. And so a good tile setter will make it look perfect. And you will regret it if you didn't take that extra time and whatever extra money it would take. Now, it usually means a different contractor because we would never, never do that for you. And so we're, we're wanting to encourage you to do it right the first time. Yes. Relocate that drain. And by the way, the tub drain is not big enough. It does not match the codes. Mm. They're an inch and a half. And the code for a shower is a two-inch drain. So another good reason to chip that bad boy out of there and get it in the right spot. And let's give you the right size drain so it actually matches the codes. Remember that a drain stopped up can overflow in a shower a lot easier than a tub. So you don't have the hydraulic pressure of the water pushing down on it, and you need that that bigger drain in a shower, and that's what the codes require. So just like that, we can solve you a lot of problems, solve a lot of problems for you if you go to the right source. We encourage you to go to kmbuilders.com to find the best in remodeling, and we are the most unique as well because of our tremendous staff and experience. And if you want some good Western wear, go to billyswesternwear.com. My friends in Bernie, right there at 1490 South Main, where I buy my Western clothes. I'm going to get my Lucasis soon, Yay. real soon. And Greg, remind me, I got some hinges for you. <laughs> and they've got a location in Kerrville, too. Check out billyswesternwear.com. And remember in remodeling to go to kmbuilders.com. And if you hear anything, any of our sponsors you'd like to know more about, just give us a call at 680-5626. And that's where you can also set up an appointment, and I'll come out and meet you. And I look forward to seeing you in person and discussing your hopes and dreams about your home. Believe me, we can make it easy for you, and you will be delighted. So give us a call at 680-KMCO or kmbuilders.com. And remember, you could have someone else remodel your home. But but then then you'd have to live in it. There you go. (laughs) 